Who is Hartwell? Um, we know a lot of details about his existence, uh, when he was born, when he died, uh, pretty much where he lived, and a lot of his employment, what he did, I was educated. But I really want to delve into uh, what kind of a man Hartwell was. Um, so we'll be doing that. This is a very early photo of his father, A.S. Albert Sumner Bradford, uh, which he probably about what he looked like when he came to California um, as a younger man, and uh, soon to be followed by his uh, wife and three uh, young children. Uh, he had four children. Three of them were born back east in Maine. One was born here in Warren, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, There's that. There's um, Hartwell as an infant. I'm, he was born in January of 1884, and so I'm guessing that's probably towards the latter part of 1884, possibly even uh, maybe a year. I'm not sure. Um, one of the problems with these photos was that very few of them had any information written on them. Right. All right. So if you're saving old photographs and you know anything, yeah. please yeah. write on them yeah. on the back. Please do that. Um, I have a problem with my own family photographs. The next. So this is, some of these photographs you've been seeing, uh, there's a lot of them in here you haven't. So, and I'll explain to you why that is the case. Uh, this was the first uh, home that A.S. had. And you notice here, this is A.S. Uh, father, and Hartwell was over here uh, shooting. And this is um, the youngest one, this is Warren. And here is Percy, the middle son. And then the, his first child, actually, was a girl, Elsie, you know, over there talking to his mother, Fan, uh, the mother, Fanny. Um, that is where they lived at first. And then they, uh, this is where Hartwell actually grew up. And that's where they lived before he built this house. This house was not built until Hartwell uh, it wasn't finished until he was 17 years old. Uh, he was in high school when they finished this. Next. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show here is they worked together as a family. They worked very hard. Hartwell was never uh, shy about getting his hands dirty and working hard. Right? He was a very intelligent, very in well-educated, very uh, almost intellectual uh, person. But um, he would pitch in and do what needed to be done. There's A.S. there. I don't know who this guy is because just as they took the picture, his arm is in the way. So, but there's Hartwell in the middle with that, with that orange bag, which I wanted to... Uh, is it here? Yeah. It's on the piano. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine this thing around, all full of oranges, and then dumping it, and go ahead. Oh, it is Canvas. It's Canvas. So, Canvas. 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 I believe, I believe this is this is uh, a person and that's Warren. But they worked together on on the uh, ranch. This is Anaheim High School, and this is where he went to school. There's Hartwell is here on the end. On almost all the pictures that we have of Hartwell, he's 
standing at the end, usually on the right side. This one is on the left. But he graduated from Anon High School in 1903. In the graduating class, there were seven seniors. And this, we're talking good time here. But that's him right here. Um, come next. And uh, track is one of the cheapest sports to have because you don't need much other than some running shoes. Uh, but that's Hartwell on the right hand side, on the outside again. Um, boys are horsing around as usual. And I'm high school. Uh, next. So there's his diploma from uh, 1903. And so they had two different uh, uh, the ceremony. Um, and um, that Posted up in his bedroom. It's up there. Yeah. We decided not to bring it down because it's about this big. The, yeah, the, the, and it's very heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the certificate yeah. is really, really big. Anyway, next. Um, this is Hartwell standing right over there with his graduation diploma, high school diploma, right here. Um, and this is in uh, June of 1903. Uh, let's see, he would have been uh, actually 19. Um, and very little has changed. You notice this door here, the only thing we, we don't have here are those uh, lovely uh, drapes. drapes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and I'm sure the flowers are long dead right now. Anyway, uh, this is what the house looked like as uh, when Hartwell graduated from high school. And um, Car, I don't know. Um, he does talk about uh, automobiles, uh, and I will get to that in just a moment. But the house really hasn't changed all that much, except you notice there's these little curlicue things up on top, and I don't know what the technical term is for it, but they're not there anymore. I think they got there was a fire uh, when the house was not occupied, um, 1970-ish, and uh, when it was rebuilt. So, at some point here, and I'm not sure if the dates are not on the back, I'm just kind of guessing based on what people look like. They took a trip back to Maine to visit family. And uh, this is the, the family home, and they're sitting out in front next. And there's A.S. This lady in the that <coughs> black dress I'm going to assume is his mother, maybe is his uh, aunt, may have been his grandmother, I don't know, but she's really old, and she's sitting there in the hot Maine sun in a black dress, so I'm sure it was very comfortable. Um, and here's, yeah, here we are, no, that's right, um, A.S. and Hartwell and his sister Elsie. So it's uh, uh, not sure who all of these people are, it wasn't marked down, so I'm not going to guess. Uh, they're obviously family members, right? But in the middle of the summer in Maine, it's, it's got to be humid and they're all dressed up. Just amazing. Okay, next. So, the reason I threw a picture of Teddy Roosevelt, he was president at this time. And his energy just kind of really uh, superimposed itself on the psyche of the whole country. And that was very much the way Hartwell was, as you will see. Mm -hmm. uh, and whether he was a supporter of uh, Roosevelt's or not, he does not say. Mm -hmm. Although we do have a, a diary entries, which we'll get to here in a moment. Uh, next. So here's a picture of Hartwell. I think that was out here on uh, where the bathroom is now, mm -hmm. sort of the mud mm -hmm. porch. Um, and this would have been uh, during the summer when he was home from the Colorado School of Mines where he was enrolled. Uh, next. So the only young lady uh, that he appears to have had some interest in at the time was Tommy. Don't know who she is, where she came from, but it's just yours truly. And uh, she did like to fish. <laughs> and so that was in there. So evidently she meant something to him. Um, is that in Newport or in? I think that's the 
Uh, it looks like the pavilion, yeah. yeah. That comes up again, we'll see it. Okay. This one of my favorite pictures of Hartwell. <laughs> and uh, um, he, um, he never smiles. There's only one picture in here where he kind of smirks. All right. And, and uh, but he's very dramatic here. And of course, um, this is one of the things that they like to do. They get on horseback and in their uh, buggies and they would go out and rough it for the day, and sometimes they'd even camp out. Um, and um, you could run around carrying guns, mm -hmm. shooting, mm -hmm. and doing all sorts of things that today you get thrown to jail for. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next. Anyway, so I think the fellow on the right there is the chaplain. And you've got Hartwell here and his sister, and uh, so they would all have these parties, I guess you would call it, horseback parties and picnics. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was their entertainment. You figure this is, uh, he does mention once that he goes, that he went to see a moving picture mm -hmm. with it silent. But there's no internet, there's no television, there's no radio. I mean, you, you really had to make your own entertainment. And this is, if you had the wherewithal to do it, this is what they did. So next. So here's bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, see, they're always shooting the bad guys. And here's Hartwell. <laughs> here's Hartwell in the middle. Um, so, and this is just out here in the hills. Right? So, next. Yeah, of course, they're, they like to pose. They like to pose. <laughs> they're here, they're being, here they're being, uh, uh, they got killed. Highway robbery. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, she, she's over there. And I don't know if that's Elsie or not, but um, the Surrey with the fringe on top. There you go. <laughs> so, okay, next. Um, and they did a lot of picnics. So here's Hartwell and his sister. I believe that's his mother. And that would be, uh, I'm thinking that's Percy. I'm not, again, I'm not sure. I have to, I've studied these pictures. I'm like, yeah, I think that's Percy. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's a couple years later and it's, it's boring now. You know, I just got to mm -hmm. get the microphone magnifying glass out and look at these things. And some of these uh, descriptions are only my best guess, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, next. So, at some point between the time that he graduated from high school in June of 1903 and the fall of 1905, he made the decision to become a mining engineer and go to the Colorado School of Mines. Colorado the School of Mines, which still exists, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most preeminent mining schools, not only in the United States, but in the world. Um, and uh, still there. In fact, that building is still there. We'll see that in just a moment. Um, but it looks a lot different now <laughs> than it did then. But that building is still there. If you can tell the little cupola thing, it's still there on the top. Um, I have a suspicion that Daddy had enough of him running around playing <laughs> bandits and stuff. He said, you're going to do something, son. <laughs> and so somehow he decided this is what he wanted to do. And uh, Albert Sr. said, yes, that's fine, and I'll pay for it. Based on the numbers that he wrote in the back of his diary, and I extrapolated this out, it cost in 19... 05, 1906 about $1,000 a year between tuition, books, room, and board, and stuff. Today, it would be about $35,000 a year. So we're looking at, it, it cost the old man 150 grand to put him through mining school. And it was a good investment because he did very, very well, not only for himself, but for the family. Right? John, there, yes. were, there were oil wells around here at yes. the time, but they did not know then that they had oil on property. That is true. So it's interesting, foreshadowing perhaps that that's yeah. what he ends up in. Well, he was, he, he as the thing that we talked about over here, um, he was in Mexico, he was in Nevada, and I'll, I'll show you <coughs> why he was good at that in just a moment. So next, here's more. They actually had their own um, uh, oh, yeah, it's um, it's a powerhouse. Or, no, yeah. no, no, it, 
close. <laughs> smelting. 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 That's okay. the word for smelting, all right? And I don't know who this fellow is standing here, but those buildings are still there. All right, next. Now you see this built. This is today. Wow. See that it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's a way changed <laughs> around it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a magnificent um, campus. Uh, a little cold for my taste, but mm -hmm. one of the things that was interesting was that being a California boy, Cartwell was able to adapt to the climate. Golden, Colorado is just north of Denver. Mm -hmm. It gets a little a little chilly in the winter time, and there's snow. And he was fine with that, all right? So um, he adapted very well. All right, next. So there were no dormitories. So you rented a room in town. This was Dr. Garvin's house, and he had a room upstairs, which we'll see in a moment. Um, so I can imagine a lot of these. And of course, they're going to the, the, the landlords, the people that own these houses, are renting their rooms out. Mm -hmm. It was easy money for them because they're going to <laughs> they're going to um, be assured of having their rent paid uh, next. So here's Hartwell in his room. Notice there's a couple of Gibson girls on the on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was racy for those days. <laughs> um, but his books, different inks study table, um, and these corduroy pants, very, very heavy, and then, of course, his pocket watch here with fobs hanging out. Right? Um, next. So here he is having a study session uh, with some of his friends, or their <coughs> classmates, and you would think that they were studying, <laughs> but... Um, then they <laughs> now, I thought perhaps at first that they were just prosing and they're smoking their pipes. Cigarettes were around, but those were for women. They were considered to be effeminate, so they didn't smoke cigarettes, but they smoked cigars and pipes. And uh, so you notice they're smoking their pipes, and Hartwell's there. And I thought for a long time that perhaps he was just holding his mandolin. No, he actually played the mandolin. And when he was a senior, at the end of his senior year, they took a trip by train visiting, it was called the senior trip, and they visited mines in Colorado and Utah and Nevada. And they would stay in hotels. And in the evenings, they would have dinner after their touring during the day. And Hartwell actually would give a little impromptu concert in the lobby. So he was that good. I was going, this really surprised me because he didn't seem to me to be that kind of a uh, entertaining kind of fellow. He was very reserved. He was very quiet. He was an introvert, right? Very studious, very smart, very sharp. But uh, he wouldn't stand up and play the mandolin for a bunch of people. But it, evidently, he did. So he, he uh, talked about it. He admitted to it. So next. So anyway, they had a little card game, the speed of the card game. <laughs> I mean, obviously, they, they posed pose this, but uh, um, I didn't realize that Hartwell got that hot under the collar, <laughs> but he did, and of course they had been drinking, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you'll see this guy here, and I think the one on the right and some of these other uh, photographs of him in the school lines, uh, classmates photographs that he has here, right next, so and now here they are. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they did drink. They drank and they smoked and they played cards and they were generally bad boys. So <laughs> that's what they that's what they did. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> it could be. Anyway, um, they did a lot of work in the mines. All right, this is where they got their experience. So here's Hartwell, and he's got a tie on. And this fellow shows up and he's up like this, and I think he's a faculty advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in his address book, he listed there's one uh, one student from Mexico, and I think that's this guy. I'm not sure, Enrique. Um, and again, a lot of this we'll never know because everybody's dead and gone. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. no one place, no way I can really verify any of this. Okay, next. So they have some very heavy equipment. Uh, it's all pneumatic. All right. A lot of it's steam pressure, they run steam lines up there and run this stuff. 
And it's not all like it was done in California in 1849, the gold rush, where they <coughs> for gold or hydraulic ink. I mean, they're starting to use power equipment here, okay? All right, next. So here's another one. This is Hartwell here working on this pneumatic drill <coughs> and uh, practicing hands-on, hot, hard, dirty work, right? And uh, he was not uh, the son of a rich California orange grower anymore. He was doing some hard work. All right, next. So here's uh, uh, he paused. He liked he liked to pose for pictures. <laughs> So there's some, some ego involved there, but he never smiles. I don't know. It's just... Anyway, okay, next. Um, here he is with the, this is a mining car, an ore car that they would dump the ore in it and send it to the smelter, um, which is what he was doing. Next. And he and his, his friends are out here. Um, I believe that's him right there. And so they're always constantly looking to identify geological structures so they can see where to dig, where they're going to get the silver out, where they're going to get the gold out. But as you will see here, most importantly, even more than gold and silver coming up is copper. Now, copper became extremely valuable and ex because of one thing, the advent of electric electricity. They needed copper to run the, the wires. They were wiring the country, and they had to have lots of copper. So Copper mining put fortunes into, well, let's see, the name Hearst might, <laughs> <coughs> or the name Clark, William Andrews Clark, mm -hmm. Clark County, Nevada, you know, yeah. whose wealth rivaled that of Rockefeller at one time. So I mean, we're talking some serious bucks here. Okay, next. So here he is out here. Again, where is he standing? On the right. <laughs> uh, and they're, they're holding their... Um, little, uh, no, they're not axes, they're little hammers, you know, <laughs> they're taking, and then they've got their bags, and so they get samples, and they take them back and assay them, that's what they mm -hmm. would do with it. Okay, next. And there was time for, for some, some fun here. Uh, I don't know who the girl was. He doesn't seem to be too impressed. <laughs> you know, and once again, he's on the right-hand side. <laughs> So, and this fellow here, who I don't know his name, but he shows up in a lot of the pictures. So, next. Now, I'm going to, during the uh, uh, March of 1908, right, that was uh, the beginning, or the, towards the, the middle of his uh, junior year, um, his sister, Elsie, passed away tuberculosis here in this house. And uh, he took it real hard. The whole family really took it real hard. And I'm going to read um, Hartwell. The last two years he was in school mines, Colorado school mines. He kept diaries, right? For which and those diaries used to be here, and they have vanished. We don't know where they are. Unfortunately, fortunately, I had the presence of mind when I was curator to mm -hmm. I scan every one of those things in this. Yeah. I, I, I have yeah. two years worth of diaries to complete this school, but I'm glad I did. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to read to you the last uh, couple from uh, Wednesday, March 18th, 1908. And there's a place up here for uh, weather, clear, warm, oh. windy, clear, cool, clear, cool. So windy. Um, most of his diary entries were very perfunctory and, and uh, they talked about homework, you know, studied for this exam, or went to bed early, nothing going on, uh, had dinner over at such and such house, whatever like that was, was pretty. But these will show that he did have a very uh, emotional side. Um, cut school this a.m. and p.m., study for EPT, which I'm not sure what that was, re-exam, so evidently he didn't do too well on the first <laughs> one, so he made it again. Daily, uh, again, assuming that's a friend, came home with me tonight at 7 o'clock. The messenger came with a telegram from home, saying 
that Elsie died at 8 o'clock last night. How I wish I could have been there and seen her again. Poor dear girl. <clears throat> Why did she have to go? Charlie and Wilson telegraphed home that I had received the telegram. It's awfully hard to believe, uh, uh, realize. It is a terrible shock. Now, Charlie and Wilson were his friends, so he was too upset to send the telegram home himself, so he, his friends did it for him. Uh, on Sunday, uh, cleared off this morning. Snow went fast, quite windy this evening. Got a letter from Papa this morning. Elsie's last words were, Papa, I feel queer, as if I was growing unconscious. And then she breathed her last, her dear girl. She is resting peaceful now. I wrote mother and father after I got the letter. It was a terrible blow. Now uh, to, <clears throat> to them and to all of us. Um, saying a lot for him to be that emotional. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, next. So this is not the envelope that he sent. This is one of them, A.H. Bradford, box 456. And you see that Mrs. A.S. Bradford, Fullerton, Orange County, California. Mm -hmm. I evidently, essentially, didn't have a post office yet. <laughs> so we had to go to Fullerton, all right? Uh, which is not saying that much more for, for that for that time. Um, next, so here's a um, um, entry in his. This is what the the uh, pages actually look like. So there's four each time. There's four, and you know, clear and uh, warm. And uh, Saturday, July 18th, uh, he's home. He comes home for the summer. Saturday, July 18th, 1908, Ethel, Helen Gilman, and myself went up to the fire. There's fires out here. Imagine that. Yeah. On horseback, all fought fire, came back to camp at noon and left alone on horseback for Jaeger's Mines. Jaeger must have been one of the other landowners up there. Had to run through the fire. Came back down the canyon and met the rest coming in. Rangers stopped them, made them fight the fire, <laughs> cleared the road so it could get into Jaeger's. Fire parted at Jaeger's line and didn't burn him. Camped at Jaeger's, tired from fighting the next day, Sunday, clear but hot, warm. Fire still burning, took horses to Jaeger's pasture. Will Jaeger and I went down uh, canyon to fight the fire, stayed around camp most of the day, Having a fine time, no game. Fire drove everything away. Mm -hmm. The folks left home in the, in the machine. <laughs> this piano. He never called it the car, the car <laughs> automobile. He called it the machine. Uh, and he had sort of a problematic, contentious relationship with his car. <laughs> Part of the problem was that everything it was so dusty. He had to take the carburetor apart and clean it almost oh, daily. Oh, oh my God. You know, but. He didn't seem to mind that much. Um, anyway, Sunday, fire nearly out here, but still burning on Saddleback. Went walking in the canyon with the girls. Pretty place, lots of ferns and tiger lilies. So, um, this is not his ordinary uh, amount that he put in his diaries. Most of his diaries are pretty uh, uh, matter of fact. Notice his handwriting. Very small, it's very precise, not hard to read at all. Um, I wish kids could write that way yeah. these days. They don't. Anyway, uh, next. Did you know how old Elsie was when she died? Well, she was a year older than he was. So, 1908, uh, she was 24. Maybe. Yeah, 24. So, and this is what they were, were doing. I think that, that, may, uh, that may have been. Her, I'm not sure, but there's Hartwell. And so they were going up there to wagon, you know, the buggy and horses, and the fire rangers go, uh-uh, you're going to help fight the fire. So <laughs> next, yeah, recruited them. 
so they set camp, as he said, and uh, roughing it, you see, and um, <laughs> that this is how they did it in those days. That's what they had to work with. Right? There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Uh, not all that pleasant for us today, I guess. So, thanks. And the machine. The machine right? Some of you may have seen this before. Hartwell, Mother's in the Back Seat. There's Percy. I think that's Ellen, the sister, right? They came out to help. She was already sick. And then when, when uh, Fanny died, uh, A.S. married his sister-in-law. That's right in front of the house there. Yeah. 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 Forge, yeah. 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 But this is the machine, and he parked it in the barn, right? And that's where he used to work on the cars, it's in the barn. So, um, and notice that the car is a right-hand drive. Mm -hmm. We still hadn't decided, settled, whether it was going to be left-hand or right-hand drive. The British never did get the hang of it, but we, <laughs> we, you know, at least had some common sense and put it off on the, on the left-hand side. But, uh, and what is he doing? This is, he's smoking those cigars. Mm -hmm. He smoked cigars till the day he died. Okay, next. Now, in the summer, this was, did have writing on the back. So Laguna Beach in 1906. So they went down to the beach and had a picnic. And they wore hats and ties. Yes. And, and the women wore long dresses, flowered behind. And this, is, this was beach attire in 1906. Here they are. And where's Hartwell? Oh, right. Inside. Right. He's sitting there. Is, 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 is he smiling? No. He just doesn't smile. Here's his sister. Um, and I would imagine that some of these were, you know, the, the names were well known here, like Kramer, you know, Chapman. Um, and uh, gentlemen wearing their boaters, mm -hmm. which are available to those who want to buy one. I found out they're almost a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, these boats this, running around like this on the beach and saying, just amazing. Okay. So, and they did like to horse around just a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, she had filleted that fish and she's got a knife in her hand. I guess you're going to eat it or else, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, next. Um, that's Laguna Beach. Yes. And um, uh, my daughter was looking at she goes, I think I've been there. <laughs> so, but there's Hartwell on the right hand side, yeah. smoking a cigar, not smiling. And, and there's his sister. Um, and they're all, they're, you can't even see their, their shoes, that their dresses are so long. Just amazing. But that was probably their beach. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a, not their normal dinner wear right. or yeah, their beach visiting dress. wear. Beach yeah. dress. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> next. Now, he's not in this picture. Um, Elsie's in this picture, but uh, he's not. So, maybe he's taking the picture, and, and whoever mm -hmm. was taking the picture is giving him a break or mm -hmm. what, whatever. But still, I mean, <laughs> just every time I see these, I have to chuckle at, at uh, what they consider to be wear to go to the beach mm -hmm. so okay next and uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, our, he's not on the right hand side here he's right here but he never I never saw one picture with him wearing a boater campaign hat straw hat uh, but never a boater all right so uh, this couple here that was the one where she was put the fish in the guy's mouth mm -hmm. oh. um, whoever they are I don't know but survive, but you see, these guys here, they're wearing their, their straw hats, their boaters. Mm -hmm. Very popular at the time. Okay, next. Now, back to the, um, um, the Colorado School of Mines. The last couple months of their senior year, they took they called what they called the senior trip. They all got dressed up, got on the train, and they went around and visited mines, right? So, 
this is very, very important. This really um, formed the basis of how Hartwell accumulated wealth. You know, Daddy provided the basis, but he went ahead and built this into really something big time. And so here's Hartwell, and this is one of the fellows that was in the, the uh, back, I think he's the one with the cards that uh, Hartwell pulled it out <coughs> in, the, in the room. So next, and they had to take the train from Golden down to Denver, and then Denver they started, they went to Colorado Springs, they went to Leadville, they, and you're going to see different places that they went to here. And a lot of these places are still there, but some of them are not. There's one uh, that's a ghost town. So, uh, and even some of these guys are still wearing derbies, although they were soon to be out of, uh, out of style. Next. This is a 32 caliber uh, Browning semi-automatic pistol. Mm -hmm. And Hartwell, uh, for whatever reason, felt that it, he was necessary to have that. So before they could bid up on the trip, he went out and bought one like this. Didn't need a permit. Did not have to have a uh, concealed carry permit. <laughs> the his world has changed quite a bit. So he just goes in, buys, buys it, puts it in his pocket, and they take off. He did not want to go on a trip unarmed. So um, these are still available. They're rather pricey. They're well over a thousand bucks. Pocket pistols were very popular at the time. So okay. Now this is the train that they were on. There was an accident with the train. Um, track something, and the cars buckled. Um, Nobody was killed, nobody was seriously injured, and they hopped in some other cars and kept it on that. Uh, they were shaken up, I mean, but um, they had train wrecks in those days. And then train crashes, they had train wrecks. All right. So here he, he, he leans out, he's taking a picture of the train going around. So this is their senior trip. Okay. They stopped and Notice the sign on the mm -hmm. yeah, and here's Hartwell, and evidently, see these two Indian fellows here. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were they were hired as guides, okay, next, because there's Hartwell mm -hmm. in the wagon with this guy, mm -hmm. and <laughs> taking them around, showing them the, the real estate, um, what tribe they are. I'm going to guess they're a Navajo because that's predominant tribe that's in there. Okay, next. And this, actually, was written on the back. This is Bingham, Utah, right? Mining town. Still there. Um, next, please. Now they're down in one of the mines. And where's Hartwell? On the right side. <laughs> He's over there. Uh, they actually went down in mines and looked at this, at uh, how they were mining, what they were mining. Uh, one of the comments that he made about when they went down in these mines, he said it was very hot when they got in there. So I'm not sure how far down they went that it got that hot, but uh, anyway, uh, next. So I want you to look at these things. These are copper mines mm -hmm. in Utah. Now, I don't know if the resolution is strong enough, but you can see the, the, the massive infrastructure that they had to build here. Next. All steam powered, didn't care about air pollution, mm -hmm. didn't carry it. none of that. That stuff didn't, they were just interested in extracting mineral wealth from the earth as much as they possibly could, as fast as they could, uh, as, as cheaply as they could. Next. And this is one of my favorite pictures. Look at this. That was all hand built mm -hmm. by hand. Right? That tr those trestles were hand. It's late, like up, up, up. Mr. Black and Mr. Decker didn't come out with their first hand tools mm -hmm. until 1916, 1917. This photograph was taken in 1909, so mm -hmm. it hadn't been built long before then. Mm -hmm. So this is all done by hand. It was truly amazing. But look at what they're doing. I mean, they're just going in. And um, whether this mine is still there or not, I don't know. But they wanted that copper, and they wanted lots of it, and they wanted it fast. So this is what they did. So, next, uh, again, 
um, you can see the trestle back there, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see, here, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit more of this. There's a steam shovel that's on a railroad car. It's on the track that comes in. And then they lay the track and the shovel goes and, and excavates more. Just amazing what, what the, the, the engineering. So these guys really were mining engineers. Okay, next. So they were learning. And they had smelters next to the mines. Why would they take all of the dirt and, along with the ore they're after and send it away? Do it right there. They don't want to spend the time and the money spending uh, on uh, sending the, um, all the, 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 they separated the wheat from the chaff right there. Mm -hmm. right? That's what they did. Okay, next. And there's several well-built structures here, but they are all done by hand, mm -hmm. right? And it, they had to haul all of those uh, materials in there on horse-drawn wagons. I mean, it's just amazing what they used to do. Uh, next, there's another one here. Um, so there's, I mean, these, these are just amazing structures. Okay, next. Now, and heavy equipment, I think, studied this picture a lot. I think that's Hartwell. I'm not, I wouldn't swear to it, but uh, I, I think it is him. Yeah. Peeking in the window. Okay. And uh, there's, uh, you notice there's uh, no safety guardrails or no warning signs or anything. It is, this is OSHA would have a feel yeah. like this. Uh, uh, next. Now, one of the towns that they stopped in was Rhyolite in Nevada. About 120 miles northeast of Las, uh, Las Vegas today, all right? And this is taken in 1909 by 1919. It was a ghost town. Mm -hmm. At one point, I don't know, it had 53 saloons. <laughs> oh, and ladies of the night that went along with it. I mean, this is a going concern. lithium deposits on the planet. Right now, China supplies at least 75% of it. Lithium. And they ain't gonna do it anymore. It's all coming right here out of Nevada. What's in the Salton yeah, Sea? I think That's really down there too, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, this is, uh, if, you, if you're, you're an aficionado of uh, mm -hmm. ghost towns, <laughs> that's your place. Okay, next. So one of the places they went to was uh, Teller <coughs> and, uh, in uh, uh, Colorado. And um, it's the mining supplies. The people that sold mining supplies made a lot of money, just like the people that supplied to the gold miners and, and the 49ers. Uh, they're the ones that really made money. So anyway, next. Um, this is today. It's not a ghost town. It's going well. So very picturesque, mm -hmm. pretty pretty place. Uh, if you like that kind of climate, it's a good place to go. Mm -hmm. Our, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, my, my wife's sister and her husband uh, moved to Colorado, not far from here, mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago. And they used to live a couple blocks from here. And it was and 17 degrees there this morning. Yeah, 17 <laughs> degrees. So I'm going, have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. The picturesque, but yeah. no thanks. Okay, next. So, this is an era of steam travel, right? Steam engines, right? Diesel had not come in yet. So they had steam-powered <coughs> trains, they had steam-powered um, excavations. It was all steam-powered. This is state-of-the-art at the time. Okay, next. So I want you to see if you can, where are we here? Over here on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. that is a steam shovel. Steam shovel, literally a steam shovel that's on tracks. 
on those railroad tracks. Okay, next. I don't think OSHA would approve of this. Can you imagine that? I mean, <laughs> this is their whole thing. Well, one, one little, and they're, they're done. Their game's over. So I, I, I look at that picture every time I see it. I just go, oh, how did they possibly do that? Anyway, they did. Uh, next. And this is uh, a close up of it. And I've blown this thing up, and, it, and the fellow here in the, in the white jacket is um, Hartwell. Oh. And uh, so, I mean, he got right in there, you know, looking these things over. He really wanted to know about this stuff. And he did. So, uh, next. Uh, I don't know why this got flipped, but it says the Alma Consolidated Gold Mining Company in Oakland. Now, there's another rabbit hole. I'm not going to go down, but his father, Albert S., was in San Francisco during the earthquake. He got there the night before to check on these investments, okay? And uh, he almost got killed three times by his own admissions. But, um, So anyway, that's there was one envelope with this return address on it. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, next. So back to uh, he has graduated from Colorado School of Mines. His uh, parents, uh, Fanny and Albert S. and younger brother uh, Warren went to the graduation ceremony uh, in May in 1909, and um, he came home. He was here for a little while, but he, his primary interest was in mining, mining interest, so he was all over the place. He was in Nevada. He was in Mexico, and at some point, and I'm not sure when, he moved his, his um, base of operations to Los Angeles. Because that's where the action was. Right? That's where the money was. That's where the deals were made. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, not out here in the middle of the war trove. Right? Mm -hmm. Next. And uh, mm -hmm. you see lemons. If you notice, this is the Placentia Mutual mm -hmm. Orange Association. So they really promoted their mm -hmm. where this fruit came from. Okay, next. So there is Mother Earth giving wealth in the form of citrus fruits, and then they discovered oil, and oil derricks sprang up. And so, <laughs> just absolutely amazing. They were in the right place at the right time, right? Next. This is Warren, his younger brother. He was very close to Warren. Um, I will, it's a little out of order, years later, 1960. When Warren passed away, mm -hmm. uh, Rennie said that that's the only time she ever saw his father cry mm -hmm. at his funeral. He's standing on top of a sluice, mm -hmm. and that is a water control device for irrigation. The Romans were using those things. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're really ancient technology, but you know what? Mm -hmm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, it works. It works. There you go. But you've got citrus tree uh, grove here, and oil well sticking out, and I think it would be safe to say that Warren uh, is uh, very pleased with <laughs> the expression on his face. Um, he's going, yep, we got it. Uh, again, he's out working, but wearing a tie, and there's his pocket watch that's bothering him now. Okay. Now, Hartwell had some photographs in here of actually working in the uh, orange groves, and here they're spraying mm -hmm. um, horse-drawn rig. Right, next, and here's another shot of them doing that. I, the, these guys are not Hartwell, but this is what they had to do right here in this mm -hmm. in these orange groves. Next, and here's Hartwell in his car, or a car, a different car, pulling something in the orange grove. But it's a right-hand drive, 
-hmm. and you notice there's fuel tank and toolbox. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this is, <laughs> and I would imagine this is a big, might even be a 12 cylinder engine mm -hmm. in that thing, just to get the power that he needed to uh, mm -hmm. do some work in the, in the uh, uh, orange groves. Okay, next. This is the barn. This is what was behind the house. Mm -hmm. This almost burnt down. Um, Walgreens is right about there. Okay, now, but that's where he kept the, the machine. That's where he worked on mm -hmm. the machine. All right. Um, I kind of wish it was still here. It'd be really cool if it was. But um, yeah. um, if you know the history of this place, we're lucky to have this. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, next, and then. They're doing something here. I'm not sure what, but you can say this is Bradford Brothers. This is their uh, packing plant in downtown Essentia, right? Um, which, again, is no more. It was, it was sold and uh, demoed. Okay, Tim? But this is what they did in there. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of mind numbing, back breaking, mm -hmm. by hand, sorting all of these, these fruits. Mm -hmm. And they had to pick up the coals, right, so that the good ones would get wrapped in little tissues and sold next. So this is, um, and they marked everything. Um, I found this picture on the internet. It's for sale. It's an oh. unconscionable price. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we have a number of those in the basement. Yeah, they're, they're just, <laughs> they're worth a lot these days. Okay, next. Now, I'm just going to run through these. This is a great uh, example of crate art. All right. mm -hmm. There was Western Litho in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. This is what who printed all of these labels. Mm -hmm. They would print them for everybody in a gang run at the same time. They had these 40-inch wide, four-color uh, lithograph presses. All right? Photography, and they would just run them and then cut them up and say, All right, Bradford's, here's yours, and here's these guys out in Riverside, right. and here's the ones at Claremont. Da, 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 da. That's what he did. It. This is a great label, except there's one big mistake in it. Facing the wrong way. Facing the wrong way. Yeah. This, those should be here, <laughs> not behind the house. Because what's behind the house? If you look, it's beach. Okay. But look here. Bradford Brothers, and there were two of the three Bradford Brothers that were mm -hmm. responsible for this, and that was Warren, who was hands-on management in it every day, and the guy who was doing the money behind it, and that was Arpa. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Another one, California mm -hmm. Dream, right? Oddly enough, this is very ironic. This is for, from probably the teens, but you notice this castle here? Yeah, it kind of looks like this. Yeah, anyway. Who would have thought, you know? Into the future. Into the future, yeah. Bradford Brothers. Next, same thing. Now, Paula is working, I don't know if they yeah. if they sold it since Bud died, but they they, they still have it. They still yes. have it. They yeah, still have it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, down in San Diego County. Yeah. Um, Brothers Inc. Placentia. Right, next. Now, this one kind of shows, I, I, you've probably all seen this one, but I like to, I want to talk about this just for a moment because it has this idealized version of what life was like here. Right? <laughs> it's a miracle. But, well, yes. but it's you know, the mountains, clear air in those days, no smog, and you've got the, the uh, all the orchard, the I can't keep saying orchard, the groves, and people going, yeah, that's how many pieces that. Yeah, right. Well, Frank Nixon fell for that. <laughs> they were the grove, all right. A lot of them did. They just some made it, but a lot of them didn't. So, anyway, next. Now, Hartwell, 
enjoyed this money. Here, he's flying. And in those days, you're flying in an open cockpit biplane, mm -hmm. and you needed to wear a flying, flying suit. So that's Hartwell in, in this, in this getup. Mm -hmm. And they're out flying around. Uh, was, he was not adventure of some sort, and you'll notice, he's not smiling. All right, next. Okay. And here he is, and he's standing on the right mm -hmm. with his cigar. Mm -hmm. I believe that is his, his wife, Irene. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, uh, and I think from the looks of that engine there that that is uh, a portion of a Ford trimotor, which would have been mm -hmm. appropriate at that time. Okay, next. And that's the same picture that's up there. I really like that because it's kind of like the, the ultimate placentia, placentia power. All right, you've got the old man there standing with his three sons, you know, Warren, Percy, and Hartwell. And um, they got things done. They were well-to-do. They made decisions that counted. That's who they were. Uh, Percy didn't really have anything to do with this. He was an electrical engineer. He went to an electrical en a school for electrical engineering in Chicago, uh, and then moved up to La, Can La Cañada, uh, up in the uh, foothills there by Pasadena. And Warren stayed here. Warren built a house over here on Palm. Uh, if you go down Palm Drive, about where that nursing home is, that's where he built that in 19. Bradford. 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 Very well to do, uh, if not luxurious lifestyle. This was still home. And uh, the caretakers, the dentists, the dentists were here. And if he became ill, he came here. And she'd make chicken soup for him and he'd recuperate from <laughs> having the flu for a couple of days, whatever. Um, okay, next. This is a very popular picture you've all seen. Hartwell from dead, and then he signs it A.S. Bradford. Don't you forget? Yes. My dad, you know, my dad would have said dad. He would never, he would never would have gone Dr. Stabler after. I mean, it's, it just would not have been, it would never have happened. So, anyway, times were different. Then. Times were different. Um, anyway, next. This is the only time that we've got any picture where there's a remote semblance of a smile on Hartwell's face. And he's hamming it up here a little bit, uh, which again is way out of character, but they did have a lighter side. Didn't really if ever came out, but you know, at least they didn't catch it on film. So um, <laughs> anyway, next. 1930 comes along and Hartwell, at the age of 45, decides it's finally time to get married. And he meets Irene Finnegan, and she had been working at the um, high-rise where he had his, I guess, penthouse, for want of a better term. And they got married in 1930, and lived a very luxurious lifestyle, had a lot of traveling. Unfortunately, uh, she got pregnant and had a, uh, a baby girl in November of 1939, and 10 days later she died. Oh so she left this infant with 55-year-old guy, who's the father, who is more than financially solvent, but what is he going to do at his age with no experience raising children? What's he gonna do? So if you would, yeah, next please. He calls his brother, Warren, whose family is here in 
placentia, said, would you raise my little girl, please? And so he farms her out to his brother, and she is raised with her cousins, Jean, Moore, uh, Bud, and Warren, and keep in mind that, yeah, they're their cousins, but cousin is the same thing genetically as a half-sibling, right? And that's the way she regarded them, and that's the way they treated her. They, that was her, her immediate family, right? Um, and um, so that's Rennie, right there, little girl. I think she's probably about four, maybe three. Yeah, Again, nothing written on the back. Come on, folks, please. She was uh, planning, hoping she might be able to be here, Rainy. Yeah. Oh, and Linda says she had a little medical yeah. procedure and couldn't oh. make it. But anyway, just sharing with you. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I was, I was hoping that she would be yeah. here and uh, uh, hoping that she would correct me. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my guesses here. Um, next. So. But they had a, a beach house there on Balboa. Oh. They did write the address down there. Yeah. Um, and then she was just this little sand rat running around oh. on the beach all summer. Good. And with the, and her hair's dark, but here she's yeah. beach blonde. Yeah. Um, having a great time. And the family would go down to the, uh, of course, these things today would be five or six million dollars or yeah, more. Yeah. In that time, it wasn't. They, they were like, oh, okay, fine. You know, a little extra money you go down there and, and buy these places and be cool off in the, in the summer. It was too hot. Okay, next. So here's Hartwell at about this time, standing out here. All right. I call this his Dilbert picture because his tie is blown up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he's um, smoking a cigar. Poker face as usual. Next. He would come down from LA and pick up Rennie from school in his enormous Cadillac. And I checked this out. This is a 1941 Cadillac. This was probably about 1945 or 6. But keep in mind, no cars were made during the war. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and he had kept that thing in spotless condition. So, eh, why? Yeah. Fabulous car. But she would dread him coming. She was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, I did two oral histories with, with her name. And um, one of them, I actually hooked up, hooked her up to a microphone, and I was carrying the, the um, tape recorder. And we're walking around the house, and she's just talking about all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to talk to you guys about what we need to do with Okay, it was just incredible. Lots of stuff you have, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so here she is uh, on the hood of, the, of her dad's Cadillac, and she was just embarrassed to all get out when he would pick her up from school because here she is, Rennie Bradford, being picked up by her dad, Hartwell Bradford, in his big old Cadillac, and <laughs> Bradford School, and it's just, it's just going yeah. out. <laughs> And she's not a, um, and still isn't, she's not a real pretentious, you know, person whatsoever. Yeah. Anyway, next. So, this is what the house looked like when he would come here on those weekends and she would stay here yeah. with father. She always called him father. Warren was dad. Mm -hmm. Hartwell was father, and it, to keep in mind that he was really old enough to be her grandfather, right. and so it was a, it wasn't a, a strained relationship. It, it was distant, right? And it was distant because of the age difference. It was distant because Hartwell was was a reserved, introverted, non-expressive kind of person, right? So, and you notice the outbuildings here; they're all gone. So. <laughs> Now, if you were standing on the porch looking, okay, next, this is what you would see. Mm -hmm. None of these houses built here. It was all orange groves. Right? And palm trees. And palm trees, yes. Lots of palm trees, too. But 
that's what it looked like. And you, see, you can see here the driveway coming in, right? Mm -hmm. And the next one, this is from the east. This is the dining room here, okay? Mm -hmm. The orange grows, those orange crate labels were correct. They had orange grows right up to the house. Yeah. Right. And you notice the, uh, the windmill here? And pump into their water tank. The water tank they had to put up higher than usual simply because they needed the water pressure for the bathroom, which is upstairs. It's the only way they could get it, right? So um, I don't know if that well is still, they, they must have kept it off you know, when they tied in the city water. So that would be interesting. Anyway, next. So if you look at Placentia 1910, this is, was the, the date that was written on the back of this uh, <coughs> sleepy little community. Next. And it had developed some by 1947, which is the date written on this, all right? But it's still a small farming community, relatively isolated, all right? Is that just downtown Placentia? Yes. Downtown, a thriving community. <laughs> It was a little farm, like any Midwestern farm community. That's I mean, there's just yeah. yeah. Okay, next. So, Richfield Elementary. Notice the <laughs> They're going to pump oil out of this. There's still oil being pumped. You go around these, these yes. oil. They're just they're, they're still now. The Bradford family doesn't have any interest that they sold that off a number of years ago. But those were. Those are Bradford Wells, a lot of them around here. Mm -hmm. So next. This is the um, graduation uh, program from Rennie's sixth grade education, uh, graduation, 1951. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can read this or not, but there are a lot of Hispanic surnames here. Mixed in with that are Anglo surnames and some very prominent families like Bradford and Kramer. Mm -hmm. When was mm -hmm. Brown versus the Board of Education, which required integration of schools? 1954. Mm -hmm. So was way ahead of the game. Yeah. They did this. Yeah. Now, did they do that because they were um, conscientious about you know, such things? Well, or maybe they were just little, uh, they didn't want to spend the money on having two sets of schools. Mm -hmm. you know, that may have, been, may have been part of it, but they didn't. The, the fact is that they didn't. All right, next. So, Rennie, this is a uh, World War II Jeep. You can tell that because it has no tailgate and there's no gas filler here. It's, it's out of the seat. I know, I used to have one. I wish I never saw it. <laughs> and this one was made by Ford because Willie's had stamped Willie's in the front here. Mm -hmm. It was Ford, it was blank, right? And that's the kind that I have. And I wish I still did, but I don't. Anyway, uh, she would just get out there. She didn't, this was before she had her driver's license, but she could yeah. drive around. She was very pleased with herself being able to do that. <laughs> so, next. So she inherited this willingness to. She liked to be outside, right? And um, I won't say rough and tumble, but she was she was not a dilettante. She wasn't, you mm -hmm. know, sitting in the parlor eating bonbons. She was go out and get it. She's still that way. Tell me. Yeah, yeah, I guess that would be one. Okay, next. So this is her graduation picture. This was her class from Valencia High School, 1937, and. It was very, very mixed. There was a lot of Anglos, a lot of Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And I asked her about that specifically, and she said, we all got along just fine, mm -hmm. right? And I thought, well, maybe that was because <laughs> of the Brown versus Board of Education. No, you go to the Placentia Public Library and the historic collection, you pull the yearbooks from Valencia High School from the 1930s, and you can see the same thing yeah. long before. All right. So next, so that's her. Mm -hmm. Rennie's um, senior picture, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. nice little pearls, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Got to have pearls. 
And uh, okay, next. Um, they did some traveling. This is Congressman Utt, who was old school conservative Republican, mm -hmm. sort of, sort of um, uh, not <clears throat> like conservative Republicans today. <laughs> But uh, he's the, she's there with Dad Warren and brother, uh, uh, and but and uh, uh, we're actually her uncle and cousin. But there she is in Washington D.C. giving the grand tour. Mm -hmm. All right, next. And um, Hartwell, because of what he was able to do and the amount of money that he had, those are the circles that he ran in. Yeah. All right. Now he was kind of off to the side, never played his mandolin for them. They probably never knew that he played mandolin. But um, he was pals with mm -hmm. this level of celebrity. Yeah. So, and this, um, it says, uh, to Rennie, every mm -hmm. best wish, Bing Crosby. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, next. He also shared his wealth. He gave donated the money, paid for 100% out of his own pocket. Well, I'm sure he got a tax credit off for it, but uh, um, he built a dormitory, Bradford Hall, at the Colorado School of Mines. Nice. And he was there with his daughter when they dedicated this in 1955, right? And that's why his name is up there. And it's still there to this day, right? Bradford Hall. There have been others built since then, right? And they call them the trads, the traditional halls, mm -hmm. right? Other former students become mining engineers and have done very well and have contributed and done this. But he was the first one to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. next. So that's Bradford Hall, back as it, as it was in the, in the 50s. Mm -hmm. He built his mm -hmm. cars, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, sure it cost him a few shekels to do that. So, next. Looking at Hartwell as a young man and in his senior years, he really, except for the hairline, yeah, <laughs> it's, right. yeah. Yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, you look at that, you know, and never really saw him with a beard or a mustache. He just, he's always clean shaven. Um, always the white shirt and the tie, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, the stern look. Okay, next. Can I, can I, before you do that, yes. can I point out on that on the picture with Hartwell? Yeah. See that little pin on his eye? Or, yes. Uh, I think that's over here. That's on, I, on the oh. display after. Oh. I think it's, yeah, it looks okay. like the same. We put out some artifacts on the piano. Maybe okay. Kathy will go through them for us. All right. Um, anyway, we went over to... Uh, uh, my wife went over to the uh, when I was trying to get this all sorted out. <laughs> and she runs over to the. I've been meaning to get over there and get some uh, pictures at the Anaheim Cemetery. And they hadn't mowed it for three weeks, and I got there just as they finished mowing, oh, so it was good. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, next. Now I want there. There are others, prominent families. Uh, interred there mm -hmm. with some rather elaborate uh, mausoleums and, and whatnot. The Bradfords is very, very concerned, very modest, right, in mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm. And even though they were probably the wealthiest group there, mm -hmm. they again, even in death, they didn't show they, they didn't mm -hmm. show that. Mm -hmm. So, um, next please. That's what Hartwell has. Mm -hmm. He didn't want anything more than that, right? So next, 1973, pardon, three? Anyway, they family gave the, uh, there was a problem here, the dentist has moved out by the 68, the place was empty, the roof caught on fire, there was, at one point the city was considering demoing this, and fortunately the Founder Society gets together and is formed, and they save this place. The um, family was Gene and Bud.
Bud and uh, Warren, and they just they gave this to the city, and the contract is that we take care of it. Mm -hmm. Still owned by the city, but we take care of it. They don't have to worry about it. So as long as we meet these conditions, we're fine. So that was the signing ceremony. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was, well, yeah. The Founders Society of Harris had control of this house for 50 years. Yes. House may be 120 some years old, but we've had it for half of almost half yeah. of its mm -hmm. life. Okay, next. Now, I put this picture last because it's really my favorite. Mm -hmm. Look at Hartwell. You know, he's taking in, surveying mm -hmm. the future, right? He's, he's not wearing a cowboy hat, he's wearing that campaign hat, mm -hmm. smoking a cigar, rowing his own boat, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And look who's looking over his shoulder, keeping an eye on it. That's Elsie keeping you know, a watchful eye over her, over her younger brother. And uh, so, um, go ahead. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I just want to thank Irene and Wendy's not here. I wish Wendy had been here today. But uh, anyway, uh, Cough and and Founder Society. I wanted to enlarge on <laughs> how I got involved in this. I had Dr. Hansen as a history student back in 1970, uh, history 484A and 484B, <laughs> Social and Intellectual History of the United States. And uh, we, uh, back in those days, he was smoking in his classroom, so he was sitting there smoking. <laughs> we were trying to be cool, so we were smoking too. <laughs> too. And years later, I come back and I'm working on my master's degree. So I finally figured out what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> and I said I want to teach history. And so um, I'm taking uh, oral history classes. And he was the director of the Center for Oral and Public History at the time, just before he retired. We had to do an oral history, write a paper based on somebody that was here, you know, local. And I went, oh, wait a minute. For, for many years, I had worked at a restaurant called the Shakeri, the Shakeri in Orange, mm -hmm. and which is another rabbit hole, which I will not go down right now because that's a different. I'll, I'll do that some other, other time. When Rennie's uh, ex-husband, or first husband. Norm came and turned 50, they rented the entire restaurant, mm -hmm. closed to the public, rented the entire restaurant for his 50th birthday party. Mm -hmm. And they had these big buttons made. Norm came in as an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and she wore that too. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> okay. And uh, so that's when I really uh, remember uh, meeting him. So I went, I'll go ask her. And she goes, sure. And so I go over to her house with my tape recorder and you know, all set up and I've got my list of questions and we're talking like that. And uh, she goes, uh, she had this big photograph album on her contacts. Gee, could I come over and, and, and scan these sometime when you're, when you're not busy? And she goes, no, oh, you can go ahead and take it. And I thought, oh, whoa, oh, this is <laughs> gold mine. And she goes and gets a couple of boxes of pictures out of her, her closet and said, here, take these too. Oh, nice. And so I go, Literally running back over there. And poor Kathy sitting there. <laughs> I came running in. I said, look, look, look. <laughs> and, uh, That's when John learned to use a scanner. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a really nice flatbed scanner. Uh, but they're slow, but they do really good work. And I burnt one out. Mm. I totally mm -hmm. I used it up on this and, and a couple other projects. So that's... Um, um, That's where you got some of these pictures from today? Yes. Yeah. And then... Then one other thing that happened with that was that we, um, I was, um, where was I going with this? It's the first time today that I lost my train of thought. That's <laughs> it's a train wreck, John. It's yes. a train wreck, yes. <laughs> a train wreck. So, anyway, um, oh, um, what I was going to say was that the term paper I didn't finish that semester, and I asked Dr. Hansen for a uh, an incomplete. 
So I'm not done with it. I got, you know, and I just kept finding stuff and finding stuff and it kept getting longer and longer. And then at the end of the next semester, I said, I'm not done yet, Kevin. And he goes, all right, well, that's it. Ends up, this thing is actually now a book. It's 80 some pages yeah. plus pictures. And I'm just going, uh, okay. So it's still sitting there, but it's going to get done now. Um, and it's published, you say? You no, it's not, but it will be. We need to talk about that. Okay. So um, what I want to do with that is you know, finish it, but give it to the Founder Society. And um, you, guys can sell, you guys can sell it and make some money off it. So my name is on it. Just go ahead and sell it. That's fine. So anyway, um, I think that's what. Any questions? Questions? I yes. have a question. The pictures in the very beginning that yes. are so old, uh -huh. were they taken with that, the, the guy hits the thing in the flash? I would think, I'm thinking that they, they <sighs> photographic technology, you know, it had the accordion sort of thing out oh, there. Yeah. And it, it would appear that these things were all taken um, during daylight hours, mm -hmm. most of them, except when they were horsing around in their room there. School lines, and um, that's one reason the resolution isn't quite as sharp. Some of it is real sharp, yeah. some of it is not. Right, but uh, they didn't have the the phone going. You know. Or the brownie, the little box yeah. brownie. Yeah. Box yeah. brownie. No, we I have, have one of those. We have a box camera in here, but I don't know if it was from the Bradford's yeah. one of those. So I, I'm not sure exactly what. Um, um, and again, unfortunately. A lot of these kind of things. There's nobody left that we can yeah. ask. You know, what camera did you use? Yeah. 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 So, right. be sure you write the date. Nothing else. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you have a starting yes. point. Yeah. Uh, I have family pictures from back in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I'm looking at this picture from Thanksgiving of 1917. See my grandmother as a young girl in there, and her father, and mother, and her stepsister, her half sister, and a couple other, but the other twenty people. I know their family. I don't know who they are. Nobody, I, there's nobody left that I can ask. I didn't have the presence of mind when my grandmother was alive to sit down and say, "Who is this?" And I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had though. No, I wish I had, you know, but I didn't. So it's very important. Yes. Where's the Anaheim Cemetery? Uh, just west of State College and La Palma, okay. south of La Palma and west of State oh, College. It's a residential area. Mm -hmm. mm. It's on Sycamore, and there's a Sycamore Elementary School. So it's just a, a historic blocks. cemetery like the one in your Belinda? Uh, mm -hmm. Not That's quite as old. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's every open every day from 8 to 5, and mm -hmm. there's a guy there from 8.30 to 4.30 in the office. You can't, uh, there are no more internments, but you can... I have ashes put there. 